It's 4 a.m. We're on the way to the airport to fly to Flagstaff, Arizona to meet up with Slick Ambassador and Loom Cube sponsored photographer Daniel James Alpert. You may know him on Instagram as Daniel James. And he does something really cool with his Loom Cubes and his drone. He uses it to fly in the night sky and create some really cool geometric shapes and light up his subjects. So we're headed out there to find out how he does it and learn a little bit more about Daniel. So while we're on the plane, I'm gonna kick it over to Daniel. He's gonna tell you a little bit more about what this video is gonna be all about. Hello everyone, Dan Alpert here, Loom Cube and Slick Tripods Ambassador. And today I wanna to show you how to use your drone to take photos like this. I'll show you everything you need to use your drone as a light painting tool. I'll show you all the gear you need. I'll show you all the preparation I do. I'll give you a behind the scenes look in the field and I'll show you the post-production that I do. So for me, the first thing I typically like to do is to pick a location. And I usually use the internet or Instagram or some source similar to that to find some inspiration. I usually try to pick a location that has a really strong subject. Then it's time to check whether or not it's legal to fly there. And for me, the easiest way to do that is to just use an app. It's called Air Map. And it, all you have to do is uh, find where you're going on the map and it'll just show you plain as day in red or green circles whether or not you can fly there. So we finally made it to Flagstaff and I'm in the car with Dan. Say hi Dan. Hey guys. So where are we headed? Uh, so today we're gonna go to an abandoned ghost town. It's called Two Guns and it's got some really interesting crumbling structures that we're gonna try and light paint with, uh, with a drone. We made it, this is Two Guns. It's an abandoned ghost town and right here behind me we have the abandoned zoo. You can see it says mountain lions. And uh, right now we're just doing a little bit of exploring and coming up with compositions for our shots for later tonight. Uh, so to do some drone light painting, you're gonna need a camera that's capable of doing a long exposure, uh, preferably a DSLR. I have a Nikon full frame camera. Uh, the full frame is a bonus when you're doing long exposures. It's just able to capture more light and you get typically less noise. My go-to lenses are my 14 to 24 and a 24 to 70. I'm using my 14 to 24. Uh, it's my widest angle lens that I have. And I really like how at 14 millimeters, you can get that distortion around the edges. So if you have some nice leading lines and stuff, you can play with that distortion on purpose. So there's a lot to consider when uh, you're doing some drone light painting, but uh, one of the things you need to consider is that there are lights on your drone um, and they're gonna do their own light painting unless you cover them. So what I do is I purchase some black uh, duct tape or Gorilla tape and I actually tape over them. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. On the Mavic, uh, these lights are really close to the motors, so you got to be sure not to tape over the motors or interfere with the propellers at all. And uh, it shouldn't take too much time or too much work, but it'll save you a lot of time in post, not having green streaks or red streaks alongside your nice, uh, purposely painted white streaks. So When you're doing drone light painting, I guess the first issue is how are you going to attach lights to the drone? So for me, uh, my first try, I purchased some Velcro and I Velcroed uh, a headlamp to the bottom of my Phantom, my Phantom uh, drone. And uh, that worked pretty well, like the, the light painted where I wanted it to, but I had to attach it under the drone and in such a way that it interfered with the drone's sensors and that made the drone not want to land. So it flew up and then it refused to come down. So it was flying for about 30 minutes past its 0% battery and uh, I destroyed a battery. Then I found out that Loom Cube makes mounts. So that's what I use now. Loom Cube makes these mounts and they kind of solve all those issues. They don't interfere with the drone sensors and you're not attaching um, some sticky stuff to your drone. So, and, and in addition to that, you know, Loom Cube has a lot of accessories. So I can put on uh, uh, gels 
onto it and choose different colors or just warm up the light a little bit or anything like that. So there's lots of options when you choose to use LumaCube. So to attach it to the Mavic here, it's pretty simple. You just kind of clip it right on and it goes right into place. There you go, one of them's attached. And the lights just kind of screw in right here. And you can actually pick which direction you point the light, which is another bonus. You know, when I used uh, tape or Velcro or anything like that, it was kind of just stuck in one direction. And uh, with these loom cube mounts, you can actually pick which direction you want it to, to lock in. So, And then lastly, I attach some filters, you know. Loom cubes are, are pretty bright white lights. They can actually even appear a little blue sometimes, so. I like to attach a warming filter. And you're good to go. Uh, it's a little hard to show you guys everything that we're doing for drone light painting at night. So uh, we're gonna do a little walkthrough right now of everything that we do to get it done. So if you're trying to do a perfect circle, first thing you need to do is decide what is the center of your circle. For me, that's usually my subject, so I fly it directly over the subject. I put it into point of interest mode, POI mode, and then how far you want the circle to be or the radius. So I don't want mine to be too big, but it's got to be a minimum of five meters. So we'll start with that and you just simply press go. And it starts flying in a circle. You can then pick the speed that it goes if you want it to go faster. Like right now, I think it's going a little bit too slow, so we'll speed it up. And you can actually time the speed to your exposure so that I can get a full rotation in one exposure, which is usually about 20 to 25 seconds. And that's really all it takes to do a perfect circle. So we've got our compos composition set up here. We found a little area that we like. We like the graffiti here and uh, the doorway. So what we're going to do is we're going to have someone stand in the doorway and we're going to uh, put a lot of bright light behind them so they're silhouetted. And then we're going to just kind of light paint the whole scene from the air and possibly do one of those halos above as well. Uh, so one of the main tools uh, for photography in general, but in particular drone light painting that you need is uh, a tripod. And uh, this is my go-to tripod. It's the Slick Pro 340DX. It's actually the first tripod that I ever bought and uh, it's literally my most used tripod today. Uh, and the reason for that is because it's a really reliable tripod. It's actually affordable too. It's under $100, so you can't go wrong there. And then it's got every feature that I could want. A three-way pan, tilt, head. So that's, that's my preference. I'm not a big fan of ball heads. It's got these foam pads, which are a big bonus in the cold. You know, aluminum or even carbon fiber can get really cold and you feel it through your gloves. It'll, it'll pull the heat right out of your hands. So this foam... Uh, keeps your hands pretty warm still and then this locking mechanism is one of my favorite there's no screws in it so you don't have to tighten anything and it's never slipped on me it's always very reliable and stays locked in place and that's why this is my favorite tripod looking up I'm not sure yet but we'll have a halo right above them like they're getting abducted <laughs> Uh, right now, I'm getting these loom cubes attached and in the right direction that I want them to face. And I'm putting some gels on just to warm the light up a little bit. <clears throat> and then we'll be ready to go. OK, 
okay, and now we try to execute our composition. I've already set up my settings. I took some test shots before taking off with the drone, and uh, those settings are ISO 1600, F13, uh, and 15 seconds. Uh, this works well for this time of night that we shot. This is kind of right around blue hour. You, you proceed with with what I showed you guys earlier, the POI mode to get those perfect halos. And then uh, once I got a perfect halo, I could see it on the back of my screen. I started to instruct our model. You know, I was trying to get her to do different poses. I had her stand with her fingers kind of wide so that you could see the fingers. And then I did some other poses as well. I also had this idea to do two halos. So you can kind of see that in this video as well. That I did a smaller halo and then a larger halo as well. Now you can hear the drone beeping with the low battery warning. Uh, it's letting me know that I need to land. Uh, you usually only get about 18 minutes, for me anyways, on my Mavic of flight time because of the extra weight. You know, you just gotta land it and see what you get. And then this is the final image that I came up with. It's actually uh, three separate exposures. Uh, one exposure for each of the halos. And then I chose one of the exposures of the model that didn't have a perfect halo in it. So I had to blend all three together. Um, I liked the one with this this person in it, this, this model shot, because it, it kind of had like a ghostly appearance to it. I had her move a little bit and it, it kind of made her a little blurry and see-through. And I just, I liked the way that that turned out. So I did a video, a screen capture of uh, my edit of this photo. I did it twice actually, but for some reason my software just wasn't working and it failed to save or record uh, the edit. So unfortunately that didn't work, but instead it actually worked on one of my other edits. It's a pretty similar photo, so um, unfortunately that's what you guys get. It should be just about as helpful though, I think.